Driving through Atlanta, amidst the new shops and restaurants, you may see abandoned lots surrounded by chain-length fences and overrun with weeds. What may have been a chemical dumping ground or an old factory is now a brownfield site. According to the EPA, a brownfield is a record facility that is not in full use, where there is redevelopment potential, and where reuse or redevelopment of that site is slowed due to real or perceived concerns about the actual or potential contamination, liability, and record requirements. A site cannot be considered brownfield if it is on the national priorities list or if it is subject to corrective action now or in the near future. The EPA estimates that there are currently between 450,000 and 1 million brownfield sites in the United States. The process of brownfield revitalization is an arduous journey but it can be accomplished with perseverance and a little creativity. The first step is identifying a redevelopment idea that works well with the location and zoning of the property. At this point in the planning stages, a little imagination goes a long way. A collaboration between Michigan State University, the Daimler Chrysler Corporation, and Next Energy has led to the redevelopment of brownfield sites into functioning biofuel cropland. Many food crops have been converted to corn in reaction to the demand for ethanol-based fuels. This small step may lower food prices all over the country. The Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Richland, Washington produced plutonium for their first nuclear bomb in the 1940s. Once a heavily contaminated site, the property has been transformed into the White Bluff Solar Station, which generates 39 kilowatts of electricity every year. Other brownfield sites have been converted into golf courses and luxury homes. The second step in brownfield revitalization is the search for funding. The Small Business Liability Relief and Brownfields Revitalization Act was established in 2002 by the Bush administration to provide federal financial assistance to brownfield developers and amplify the response of state and tribal programs. The EPA website provides several options specifically for brownfield redevelopment funding. Brownfield cleanup grants offer up to $200,000 in assistance if eligible and include sites that are contaminated by petroleum products, hazardous waste, and other pollutants. The third step to revitalization is site remediation. This process can become tricky because there is no manual for brownfield cleanup. Every site is completely different. Materials reuse is an option many developers consider because it lowers the cost of cleanup, reduces the need for virgin materials, and provides backfill before construction begins. The physical and chemical removal of contaminants from soil, water, and air can be accomplished in a variety of ways. In situ chemical oxidation is a soil remediation method that uses sodium and permanganates to oxidize organic molecules that are resistant to natural decomposition processes. Fenton's reagent may also be used as an oxidizer in this process, but it must be applied with care to avoid iron contamination in the soil. Multiphase extraction is a method used to clean soil and water simultaneously. Multiphase extraction utilizes oxidation and vapor condensation to remove volatile organic compounds and the gases they produce. The EPA selected the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission in Cleveland, Ohio as its first brownfields pilot in September 1993. The pilot grant program initially distributed up to $200,000 over two years to 31 local governments for brownfields redevelopment projects. These governments surveyed and assessed their brownfield sites and began to plan the cleanup and reuse of these sites to protect public health, produce jobs, and convert unwanted land into profitable real estate. The pilot program funds could not be used to directly clean up sites. The pilots are intended to provide EPA, the states, tribes, municipalities, and communities with useful information and strategies as they continue to seek new methods to promote a unified approach to site assessment, environmental cleanup, and redevelopment. 
In Cleveland, three sites were selected for redevelopment. The Sunar Hosserman site, the Midtown Corridor site, and the Collinwood Rail Yard site. Let's take a closer look at two of these sites. The Sunar Hosserman property was once the site of a furniture manufacturing plant that had been contaminated by the solvents used to clean metal furniture during production. Initial cleanup costs were estimated at $800,000. The current owner of the property used the innovative technologies of soil vapor extraction, groundwater pumping, and sparging an aquifer with air to cleanse the site. Property improvements from the owner are estimated at over $3 million. The taxes on the improved property along with personal and corporate taxes from the new company, have created an annual revenue of $1 million a year for Cleveland from this site alone. The Collinwood Rail Yard was once one of the most active yards connecting the industrial centers of the Midwest and Northeast. The site became vacant in 1962 and left 47 acres of contaminated land. Problems with the site stemmed from underground storage tanks, heavy oils and greases in soil and groundwater, and asbestos and lead paint in old buildings and equipment. Over $2 million was spent in revitalizing the site, which was divided and sold to two different corporations. The two companies have brought more than 300 jobs to the area and helped the surrounding community flourish. The site has been designated a National Showcase Brownfield and was a finalist in the Phoenix Award competition for the best redevelopment project in EPA Region 5. The pilot is currently developing a graphic information system to support Brownfield's redevelopment decision making. This tool will provide organizations and individuals with up-to-date information which many communities across the country already provide for economic development and marketing for local properties. The Atlanta Steel Hoop Company was established in 1901 by a group of businessmen to use scrap steel to make cotton bale ties and barrel hoops for the booming city of Atlanta. The company was nestled into what was once part of the neighborhood called Home Park in the northwestern part of the city. This neighborhood housed working and upper class families as well as an eventual college student population from the neighboring Georgia Tech campus. The company expanded its product line in 1915 and operated with declining profit margins until December 1998. The steel mill was considered a brownfield site and an eyesore for the surrounding community. Soon after operations came to a halt, the 138-acre steel mill was sold to Jim Jacoby and Charlie Brown of Jacoby Development Incorporated. Jacoby's initial plan for Atlantic Station was a mass-produced and somewhat stereotypical suburban development that was motorist-friendly. It was not until Brian Leary, the Vice President of Design and Development for this project, approached Jacoby as a master's student at Georgia Tech with a progressive new idea. Atlantic Station would become a mixed-use community with a stylish urban appeal. By mid-1999, deconstruction of the steel mill began. The first step in steel production is reducing iron ore with coke or limestone. Sulfur and phosphorus are removed from steel while manganese, nickel, chromium, and vanadium are added to give steel its desired properties. All of these substances were abundant in the soil, air, and surface water of the redevelopment site. Over the course of two years, 165,000 tons of contaminated soil were removed from the site. The concrete foundations of the steel mill were crushed and ultimately provided 132,000 cubic yards of backfill to stabilize the ground and prevent further leaching. Granite, harvested from the site, also served as backfill materials. Once the cleanup was complete, the construction of Atlantic Station became a mixture of innovative design and materials reclamation. Atlantic Station is now a fully functioning, mixed-use community with 5,000 residential units, an office park, a luxury hotel, and a multitude of stores and shops all within walking distance. It is currently the largest brownfield redevelopment site in the nation and an example of what creativity and environmentally focused planning can accomplish.